I'd like to introduce Terry Smith. Um, Terry's currently showing his work Noise in the showroom bar. If you'd like to read more about the exhibition um, installation, uh, there's some information in the bar if you want to read that. Uh, Terry's an international artist. Um, he's going to be showing a new piece of work in Venice this year called Broken Voices. Um, I suggest you try and make it if you can. Um, I'll pass you over to Terry to continue talking about his work. Um, when you show your old work, it's like a mini retrospective. The greatest hits, etc. So I chose this set without really looking at them, just making sure there were no doubles. Next time I might do a different thing. These were shuffled and placed in the tray at random. I hope that will light me up. I might do it different next time. I've always found showing my past work weird. I'm not sure why. I think it's because I hate to look back. I only want to look forward. I usually like to cover my tracks, so I always think that the fact that I photograph my work and show it, like now, is already a compromise. I don't know if there is a better thing to do, so I at least do it differently each time. The fact that I'm writing this text at all seems like a failure. It's not that I don't want to express or expose myself. Well, that's a dichotomy. It's showing off in shrinking violet, all in one. But to get back to my point about history, it's easy to make it up and to think that you're not fooling yourself. I have memories of being a child, but I'm not sure what are my real memories and what are those that are planted in me by conversations and photographs. There are some things I remember only because there is a picture. I am suspicious of my own past. Do I really remember sitting in that tin bath? Why have I imagined that memory, merging it with real, with real memories? Even real memories can't be trusted. Even looking back at these slides over the last decade, I'm not sure which of the stories I might tell about them is the truth. But I like to play, so really the idea that I can lie about them is becoming interesting. I'm going to do that on another occasion, make up lies to accompany the work. Not that anyone will notice. It's just that for my own personal reasons, I need to do certain things that seem inappropriate or unnecessary, like a wound or a gesture, something to entertain me. Well, we had just passed the halfway point. The big question often asked about art is what does it mean? What is the meaning? Sometimes this question is asked aggressively. What right does this work have to exist? Why should I look at it? That used to be the main question, but it's changed now. I think with David Hurst and Tracy Emin breaking into popular media is one, of, is one fact. But Hobley broke that barrier in the 60s. I think what is different now is that people recognise that there is big money in art. And money legitimises all activities. So what it's worth 
is answered not by its cultural significance, but by its financial status. This, after all, is nothing new. It's always been difficult to get to the essence of what a work is about, its meaning. The difficulty is, for example, like trying to explain a joke. It's just not funny. The power of a joke is in the surprise, the delivery, the amount of alcohol consumed. I think art is a slow burner. There is no need for a punchline. I don't really want to make documentaries. I mean, this is what, what is because it was there. And the other ones, the other footage I've got, I'm still not sure I can use it. Because you know, there's a kind of, there's a kind of complicit, there's a kind of lie involved in the documentary. Like you know, you're, you're not giving, you know, the truth. You know, I, I tried the best I can to kind of. It's a very conventional documentary, and I think that, that you know it's better to make unconventional things because at least the, you have the chance of seeing that they're, you know, what's going on. Um, but I think that that's okay for me to make this piece. It's good. It, it means I can talk about real issues there in different places. Well, I think it's one to one. I think I mean I think that you can you know you can talk about it after that. I think there's you know I think that I mean some of the most important things I've seen that have really affected me are things that when I first saw them, I didn't like them. I remember seeing Steve Reich uh, performing a. The, the piece called Tagging Piece. Do you know this piece? Does anyone know that work? Okay. Well, Steve Wright, it, 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 he comes on stage. I went to see him at the Miranda House in 19 something or other. And he came on and just did. <laughs> two people. They go in and out of sync, phasing in and out of sync, for about, I guess, 10 minutes or something, maybe less. And when I first saw that, I just thought I'd play 10 quid to see that, you know, it's ridiculous, you know. And then he kind of went off and came back on again and played the room with the stuff and the kind of things I'm familiar with. And then at the end, we all kind of clapped, you know. <laughs> and the more I thought about that piece, I kind of went from really hating it because it seemed like not enough. And then I kind of thought, that's brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. And I wish that he had just performed that piece and then left the building. We would have all would have turned nasty, probably, but we'd all demand their money back. But later on, we'd have realised how wonderful what a gift it was to give us. So I think that I'd, I'd like to do that in an artwork, is to kind of really piss people off <laughs> to begin with, and hope that afterwards they kind of felt like it was a good experience to have.